Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us today for the next webinar in our What's New series. In today's webinar, we'll cover some of the latest features in Microsoft 365 that you can implement in your business, as well as covering some more features that are coming up in the next year or so that give us a bit of an insight into the future. Don't feel like you need to make notes or take it all in straight away, as we'll be sending out a recording of the webinar and a follow up fact sheet later today. Also, if you have any questions, please do feel free to drop those into the Q&A box at the side at any time. Um, I'll try my best to keep an eye on those as we go along. There will also be some dedicated time for questions at the end of the webinar. So let's take a look at the agenda for today. First up, we'll be looking at how you can improve the quality of your Teams calls with voice isolation. Then we'll be looking at the new Discover feed that is coming to Teams. Next up will be Intelligent Call Recap for Copilot and Teams Premium users. Then we'll be looking at how you can keep your documents on brand with a new template option in OneDrive. Following that, we'll be looking at meeting controls and how to make those easier with new access and security categories. And then we'll be looking at the new Sticky Notes app in OneNote. Finally, we'll be finishing up by looking at what's next for this webinar series, the next steps that you can take with your organisation as well. So good to see many people returning again for today's webinar. For those of you who may not have met us before, let's start with a welcome. My name is Jennifer Benj and I'm the marketing lead at Bedrock. Bedrock is an IT managed service provider and Microsoft solutions partner for modern work. This means that most of the IT we implement is based on the Microsoft stack. So that includes things like all of the Microsoft 365 apps, Teams, Azure, etc. We're also experts in secure, resilient networks and managed IT solutions where high performance is absolutely critical. So this means that we work with organisations that have some of the highest security requirements in the UK. We manage mission critical IT and operational technology for highly regulated organisations. The most important thing we want to achieve, no matter what your organisation does, is to make sure that your IT strategy is supporting your business as a whole. We do this with the help of our eight strategic rocks that you can see on the screen here. So these are skills, data, investment, backup, strategy, security, quality of service and collaboration. The collaboration rock is the focus of this webinar series, as at their heart, most of the Microsoft tools and apps that we'll be looking at are collaboration tools. We meet lots of different organisations throughout our daily work who most of them already have these Microsoft apps and solutions in place, but they're not necessarily using them to their highest capacity. So we designed this webinar series just to make sure that if you are investing in those tools, you're getting the best value and best outlay from that investment as well. So let's get started by looking at some of the new features that we've got today. So we first introduced voice isolation in last December's What's New webinar, and I promised I'd let you know when it was going to be available. The latest update is that it has started rolling out now and should be available sometime between now and the end of May. Obviously, not everyone gets it exactly the same time. There are an awful lot of Microsoft customers that it needs to roll out to, but that's the latest information that we've got that it should be becoming available to you by the end of May. On the left is a screenshot of the options that you currently have for reducing background noise in your calls and meetings. Noise suppression allows you to cut down on background noise to varying degrees from low to high, or you can turn it off completely. The new feature is on the right, voice isolation. With voice isolation, Teams recognises your voice and suppresses other noises to ensure that you're the only one heard in, in, for example, unscheduled calls or scheduled Teams meetings. After a brief enrolment process, the AI in Teams will begin to recognise your voice. Noise suppression masks out any other background noise, whereas voice isolation will filter out other voices as well, making sure that your voice is the only one that can be heard. Here's a bit more detail on that setup and enrolment process for voice isolation. First up, you'll need one of your Microsoft admins to enable the voice recognition feature for your account. 
Once it's available to you, navigate to the recognition menu item in the Teams settings menu to start. You will go through a quick and secure enrollment process that involves reading aloud a short paragraph. And it's worth noting that if, if we do have any viewers outside of the UK, um, you can do this in, in one of 25 languages. So it does recognise other languages as well. Um, and this creates your voice profile, which is a set of voice characteristics that are unique to you. This voice profile will then be used by, by, by the voice isolation model to ensure that only your voice is transmitted through your microphone. Alongside suppressing unwanted background speech, voice isolation still removes all of the other background noises that you might have used noise suppression for, just to ensure overall quality of sound. Once you've created your voice profile and enabled voice isolation, it will take effect during your next meeting or call. For this feature to work, the user is saving a recording of their voice. So this voice data is stored and processed in the same region as all your other team's data. But you do still need to consider kind of as an organisation whether you want that biometric type um, information saved. So that, you know, think about whether that fits in with your existing compliance and government's po policies and whether you, that's something that you want to allow for your organisation or not. But if it is something you want to use, I think this could be a really useful feature just to cut out any kind of general background noise. Especially as some of us are, you know, we've, we're returning to the office. Some people are still doing Teams calls whilst in the office. So there are a lot of other voices around. This is a useful feature just to make sure that you're easy to hear on those Teams calls and only your voice is the one that's being um, sent through to your calls and meetings. So again, this is rolling out now, should be available by the end of May. The final additional feature that is coming with this update is a label which will indicate whether noise suppression has been activated or not. So it's quite small on this screen, but as you can see, the caller on the top left has a purple label where his name would otherwise appear, indicating that noise suppression is active. This will give the user confidence that if they are in a noisy setting, the other, other attendees on that call won't be able to hear the background noise. So I know we, there's always that awkward moment where you can hear something going on in the room behind you. Perhaps there's a dog barking, perhaps there's someone being extremely loud on another call and you kind of have to say, oh, I hope I hope no one can hear that. Can everyone still hear me OK? This is just a little badge um, type button that will give you the confidence to know that all of that other background noise is being blocked out. Um, and just for that extra peace of mind, you know that those extra noises aren't being transmitted and you're still easy to hear for the other people on that call. OK, next new feature that we've got today, the Teams Discover feed. So the Teams Discover feed is a personalised scrollable feed of Teams channel content that helps you to catch up on posts from people, um, channels, topics in, in a single feed. So the idea is that you can adapt the feed to show you only posts from people or channels that you want to appear in this Discover feed, helping you to catch up on topics or channels that you're interested in across either your team, a wider a selection of teams or the whole broader organisation. This feature has been in public preview for a couple of months now and we're expecting it to start rolling out fully quite soon. Some additional features that the feed provides, um, to, which will give you control as a user, it will allow you to see why the post has, is relevant to, to you, along with the feedback mechanism to share with the product if the post was useful or not. So in essence, you're kind of training the tool to show you more of those posts in the future or less of those posts in the future, if, whether you're telling it if it's useful or not. Users can also control the content they view on the feed from the three dot menu at the side. Um, and you can even choose to stop seeing posts from specific people or specific channels. So if there are different people and channels that you catch up with regularly anyway, you don't need those to appear in your Discover feed. You can just exclude those altogether. You can like, comment or share posts from the Discover feed just like any other channel post. Uh, someone here is asking, does the Discover feed only show in the list view of Teams? So for, for those of you where it started to appear, I have to say we've not got it yet at Bedrock, um, it will appear right at the top of that left hand channel uh, um, list of Teams. So yeah, it will appear just there right at the top underneath the Teams header. OK, 
Okay. Next part is you can change what you see in your feed by selecting more options. From there, you can choose an option from the menu. You can choose not to show the specific post again or not to show posts from that entire per, um, channel or from that person. To see the types of posts that you're hiding or to unhide posts, select settings. A window will appear like the one on the right there that will show the posts that you're currently hiding. You can just select to cross those out if perhaps you hid those by mistake and you do actually want those appear to, to appear in your Discover feed, you can unhide those just by clicking that cross to the right. This feature isn't widely available yet. As I said, we are kind of expecting it to be rolling out anytime soon. Um, but some of the feedback that we've been seeing so far from the pre preview stages suggests that users might find the sudden appearance of the Discover feed a bit confusing. So as posts from all different channels and chats will appear together in the same list of the same feed, um, some people have kind of panicked almost that everyone included, included in that feed can see all of the different posts in there. This isn't the case. The feed is only visible to the person, to the account user, and it, they're only able to see all of the channels and, and people's chats that they already they already have access to. But this is just something worth bearing in mind. If people generally come to you in your organisation to, to talk about new new things that have appeared in Teams, um, it's just something to bear in mind that you may need to give people the confidence to understand that anything that they see in the Discover feed is purely for them. And just because there's different channel chats all listed one above the other, those people can't see all of those messages that are in that feed. So that's the new Discover feed in Teams. Next up, we have Intelligent Call Recap. So the Calls app in Teams will soon have AI generated notes and action items from your calls so that you can pay attention to your conversations and save time coordinating the next steps. This intelligent call recap will work for both VoIP and PSTN calls and summaries will be generated for, um, from calls for which transcription was enabled. So that's important to note. It's not just listening into your conversation and then creating some bullet points based on what it's heard. It is just using the transcription that it's already created to create a summary from that. So it's taken all of the, you know, you could have pages and pages of transcription notes and it's just picking out the key items from, from within that to create this intelligent call recap. This feature will be available in the first half of 2024, so <laughs> quite vague, but any time around now. Um, for both Teams Premium and Copilot for Microsoft 365 users. So unfortunately, this is not something that comes as with the standard Teams, but if you are a Teams Premium user or you have started using Microsoft Copilot, this is a feature that will be available to you. Again, I think it would just be useful that you won't, if there is a particular date mentioned, for example, or a follow up action item, you won't have to personally crawl through pages and pages of transcription because hopefully this cool recap summary will highlight all of those important dates and action items for you. Next new item, we have the new template option in OneDrive. So coming soon, selecting a add new, selecting the add new button in OneDrive for the web will give you the exist, existing option to create a new blank file, but also the new option to create from templates for Microsoft Word, Excel and PowerPoint. So what this does, it will allow you to browse templates by category or search for a specific template. You'll then be able to preview each template and create a new file from it in one click or view the details page for more information about that template. If your organisation has templates stored in an organisational asset library, these will also be available. So you can see on the screenshot here, the first item that is highlighted at the top menu um, is recommended templates, but the next one along uh, that says Contoso, that's um, Microsoft's kind of fake brand that they use for, for their examples, that would be your organisation name. So if you do have existing branded templates that you want people to use, you'd be able to put those in that section there and just it's a really quick way to keep people on brand if they are creating a new Word document, if they are creating a new PowerPoint, 
the template will be right there, easy for them to use. No excuse to start going off and creating <laughs> their whole new brand of their own. Uh, so this is due from late March to mid-April. So if it's not available, available to you just yet in OneDrive for the web, do keep an eye out as it should be available very soon. Next up, we are making meeting controls easier, hopefully. <laughs> As we've covered in this webinar series, Microsoft are constantly adding more and more options for your meetings, which can make it really complicated to pick out the settings that you need when you're setting up a new meeting. This update is really a pretty simple solution for that. Rather than adding further new options, it would just add the existing options into related groupings or categories, making it easier for you to find and select the meeting options that you want. We're expecting to see this update anytime between late April, April and mid, uh, mid to late May. So again, when you're setting up a meeting, you'll just have this new meetings option menu available to you and you can select everything from there. So in terms of the security requirements that you need, the access um, availability, all of those things you can set up with from these categories, just you can kind of work through that list and make sure that you've not missed anything for that meeting. Next up, this was another addition that we added to this webinar just recently. Um, this is a new extension to OneNote, which is called Sticky Notes. It's designed to help you grab information quickly that you can then revisit at a later time. To launch the new Sticky Notes app, open the OneNote in on Windows, uh, OneNote app on Windows, and select the Sticky Notes button. So you can see here, it's just in the menu right at the top next to the Share button. Um, if, if you do have the latest version of, of OneNote, it should be up there already for you. After launching the new Sticky Notes app, you can pin it to the taskbar. And if you do do this, if you do pin the Sticky Notes app to the to the taskbar, there will be no further need to open OneNote to access it again in the future. So although it is part of OneNote, it kind of does exist on its own as well. You can pin it as a separate item in your taskbar, so it's just always there when you need it. So here's some of the features that come with this Sticky Notes function. So when you select plus note, um, you'll be able to create, create a note or you'll be able to select screenshot to take a screenshot of your current app window with a single click. So rather than opening another screenshot app and then dragging the bit that you want to cover, just one click and it will screenshot the entire page that you're currently looking at. The notes will automatically include original source information of the app window where the note is taken from. So, for example, when a presentation is shared in a Teams meeting, this feature will allow you to take screenshots of important slides with a single click while staying focused on the meeting. So, again, rather than having to quickly find your app to take a screenshot, drag, quickly get that and then and then save it somewhere, this is just going to create all of your screenshots in a, in a um, rolling feed so that you can take more than one and they'll just all appear stacked on top of each other. For a recurring meeting, um, if you're taking notes on the same page and, and you're past, um, for about the same presentation or it's, it's related to the same meeting, your past notes will automatically rise to the top when you open the new Sticky Notes app during that next instance of the meeting series. So it's quite intelligent where it will help you go back to your previous notes from that recurring meeting and you can just, again, stack on top of those, those last notes so that everything's held in one feed altogether. You can also use this new sticky note option to capture a note or screenshot from a website. In this case, clicking the note will reopen the website that you took the, the um, note from. So if you regularly take notes from the same website, you can return to capture important sections from your and, and your previous notes um, and they will all rise to the top in the app when you go back to the same website later. So, for example, maybe you're always taking notes from the same news website. You need to stay on top of, of a particular sector's uh, news. You, the Notes app will redirect you to all of your notes that you've taken from that website and you can just continuously add to that note. 
To use the Sticky Notes app in a side-by-side -side mode while using, while using other apps, you can also dock it to your desktop. So again, really useful if you're keeping track of all the information and notes that you've taken from a particular presentation or a particular website, you can then view those really easily side by side. Sticky Notes is currently in public preview for people using the latest version of OneNote. So you might not have access to it straight away, but it will be coming soon. I'm looking forward to learning a bit more about this feature and, and putting it into action so that we can see how useful it really is in day to day life, how often we're going to sort of gravitate towards this rather than any other note taking options. OK, we've whizzed through our new updates for today. Um, I just wanted to let you know about the next webinar in our series, which is coming soon. Uh, so that will take place in May. And once again, we'll be looking at the latest releases from Microsoft. So Cara is going to drop a link into the chat for us, which is done. It's in there for you. If you would like to sign up and join us again on the 2nd of May, please do just feel free to follow that link, fill in your details and um, register for your place now. We'd really like to see you again in May. I just wanted to remind people about the stakeholder workshop that we offer. Um, so this is the eight rocks assessment. So going back to those eight strategic rocks that we talked about right at the start of the webinar, this stakeholder workshop is designed to get consensus on the priorities for your organisation. So we can conduct this face to face or virtually, and it just helps to get leaders and investors aligned on the best way to solve any IT issues that your organisation is currently facing. So it will potentially help you address where you need, can cut costs, make cost savings or make additional investment to improve the way things are going. There are no cost implications to actually taking the assessment other than a mutual investment of time. So if that sounds like it's something that could help you and your organisation, please do feel to, uh, please do feel free to reach out and we will be happy to talk you through the next steps for that. OK, we have a little bit more time for Q&A now. So if anyone has any questions on any of those new features that we've covered, please do feel free to drop those into the chat box now. Um, so someone has asked, where does it show that the person on the call has voice isolation on? So as far as I know, there will be no kind of outward indication that you as, as, a, as a speaker on a call are using voice isolation. Obviously, you'll know because in the settings you've switched it on. Um, you, there's just a slider button in, in your settings menu to say that you want to use um, your voice isolation. But th there's no uh, similar to if you had noise suppression on, which a lot of us do already. There's nothing kind of outwardly to the other attendees of that meeting or the other people on that call to tell them that you're using voice isolation. Hopefully, the only way they'll notice is that they'll be able to hear you very clearly. <laughs> Um, and that's that's the only the only way they'll know. Um, someone's asking, is the OneNote sticky notes coming to Mac? It will be coming to Mac for sure. Um, it might just be a little while longer than um, than some of the the Microsoft options. Um, so I will keep an eye out for that um, for that for you, Alan. But it will definitely be coming. Um, as I said, it's in public preview right now for people using the latest OneNote um, for Windows. And I think we'll just have to keep an eye out for you to let you know when it's coming to Mac. I think that's pretty much everything. If you do come up with any other questions or think, oh, I wish I'd asked that during the webinar, um, please do feel free just to pop a reply to the email that we're going to send you later today. That email will, will contain the recording and also some notes so that you can share those with anyone else in your organisation who you think might find it useful. Um, but it's also it will, if you reply to that, it will come direct to me. So either I can reply or we can set up a call with one of our more technical team um, to answer any queries that you might have. OK, last of all, I just want to say thank you everyone for joining us again today. Really good to see so many of you, especially sort of during Easter holidays time. And um, I hope to see you again at our next webinar in May. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.